My guest today is Miss Hannah Williams, Marin Clark, and JT Forrester. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day. Does anyone need to check their insulin? See, that's my point, that when you have diabetes, it's always, even I'm sitting here thinking about it. Is everybody okay? Yeah. But that's the difference between diabetes, type 1 diabetes and other diseases is something you, every minute, you got to, do you need to check it? You okay? So if we have, if we have you all have devices, right? Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> Way to go. Okay, I want each one of you to... Uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you when you was diagnosed and all that. Hannah? Uh, I'm Hannah Williams. I was diagnosed at 12 years old. I'm 23 now and I work at Memphis Incredible Pizza Company as their group experience liaison. Okay. Uh, I'm Marin Clark. I was diagnosed at 16 months and oh. I'm currently 17 and a senior at Carrierville High School. All right. Uh, my name is JT Forster. Um, I was diagnosed at the age of two. I'm currently 26. Uh, and I work at uh, AM360 Fitness uh, that's partnered with uh, AM360 Diabetes with uh, Dr. Latif's office. And uh, I'm also a team attendant for the Memphis Grizzlies. All right. I love that. Despite type 1 diabetes, which is 24 hours, seven days a week, you don't, even when you sleep, you still have type 1 diabetes. I mean, living with it, I like to say. So I'm so proud of you all. And just for full disclosure, each one of these uh, beautiful young people today that uh, took the time out of their day to join me, uh, get their care, diabetes care from AM Diabetes. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So let's do this. Let's start with uh, Hannah. What is a day like for you living with diabetes? Absolutely. So... Actually, I'm on that ever since now, so it's a little bit easier than it used to be. I typically wake up and I have to check what my blood sugar is, depending on if it's high or low. That's kind of how I decide what breakfast is going to be. Um, bolus for that, go to work, try to keep an eye on it most of the day. Um, I work at a buffet, so sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, depending <laughs> on how snacky I feel. Um, but bolus, I, we bolus for everything we eat, so anything we put in our mouth, we have to take insulin for. Um, and then go home. I have a dog that I take care of. He's training to be a diabetic alert dog, so we do training with that, too. Um, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so what about you, Marin? Uh, what is what is a day, what does a day look like for you? So kind of like Hannah, I usually wake up, and that really sets the tone for the day. You know, if your blood sugar is high or low, kind of either put me in a good mood or a bad <laughs> mood. Uh, honestly, it really controls the mood. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. emotions, big thing with yeah. that. That even goes into because I'm still like a student at school. You know, if there's a big test or I'm stressed out, that totally affects my blood sugar, like hundred percent. Um, what I'm doing, how much insulin I'm going to give, and then I'm a soccer player, so you know I'll go to practice after school, and managing my insulin and what I'm eating is a huge part of that, um, and just eat dinner accordingly. And yeah. <laughs> okay, and JT? So uh, for me, I it's a little bit different. Um, I don't go to school, and I'm working you know, full-time at the clinic, uh, so I'm around diabetes all the time. <laughs> Uh, so it's always on my mind and then now that the season's about to start for the Grizzlies uh, It's gonna be a little different uh, When I'm out there with the players and stuff and I'm kind of working with them uh, to get ready for the game I definitely have to manage uh, How my blood is and you know luckily enough. I have the pump that tells me what my blood is um, So I can just look at my pump and say oh, I'm low. Hey, I'm gonna go on my lunch dinner break or whatever so it's a lot uh, different than actually sitting there at a full-time job because I'm, you know, at the at the clinic, I'm doing a lot of, you know, tours and showing them around the the fitness center and everything. Um, so I'm just back and forth, just talking to different people and such. Uh, but at the, you know, the Grizz games or whatever, I'm doing a lot of movement. I'm doing a lot of things, and uh, that really affects how your blood sugar, you know, reacts to you. Mm -hmm. And it's like it, it just goes back to me. Just imagine everybody for one moment that you're dealing with something like this. I, I associate insulin with a vital organ in your body because we have to have it. Yes. Mm -hmm. And without it, and people don't think about that when they think about type one diabetes. For some reason, people think that's like a, a no big deal kind of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like, I don't know why, I guess maybe if you don't know anybody with it or you're not diagnosed with it yourself, maybe you just don't it's maybe it's just a knowledge 
think. Maybe you're just not educated about it. But every moment, you know, you have to think about it. And when you use the word bonus, imagine being three years old and somebody's <laughs> out talking about some bonus. Right. What yeah. is bonus? Anybody? Uh, so that's when you give yourself a dose of insulin uh, for whatever food you're eating or if your <laughs> blood sugar is just out of range. And uh, when I was learning to read, my mom actually made me like flashcards with all these diabetes terms oh. on them to learn. Like, so, there you go. Right. Yeah. man. So, how did you all feel like when you were little children and you were diagnosed with diabetes? Because that was you know, pre pumps and all that, which we'll get in later. We have a whole segment about the uh, <laughs> AM diabetes, uh, first of its kind in the nation, insulin pump center. You all, all know about that. But, I mean, how does it, I mean, how did, you, do you remember your first reaction when you got the diagnosis and getting injections and all of that? How did it feel to, to each one of you? I mean, for me, I was two. So I kind of, I mean, growing up with it, it was just kind of, you know, click, i done. You know, it was kind of like second nature to me. Uh, I mean, just some things that kind of hit me were like when I went to, you know, different like basketball games or to the fair or whatever, it's like, oh, you can't have that, that type of situation. And I would see all my friends like having cotton candy or whatever. And, yeah. it, and you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> like, why me? Exactly, exactly. So just things like that. But now that I've gotten older, I'm more of a, I don't look at it as I can't have that. I say, what's going to, how's it going to cause what I'm going to feel later on? Mm -hmm. And so I look for more of the futuristic, like, oh, well, I'm going to feel bad if I have this, so I'm not going to do it. So that's my, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I think mine was a little different since I was diagnosed at 12. I kind of remember that whole shift of going from you can eat what you want, you kind of live life and it's not a big deal to you've got to think about this 24-7. And if you do one thing different the next day or one thing, quote unquote, wrong, um, it's completely going to change how you feel for either the rest of the day or even just for part of the day Man, <laughs> I mean really how do you have time that I just admire you all because when I just the thought of something that consumes me for 24 7 <laughs> how can you even think about I guess you have to have discipline to just think about something else when all you have to, you got to think about this thing mm -hmm. all the time like what about yeah. sleeping Mary do you have what about sleep time uh, so uh, I and my mom, in case I don't wake up, set alarms um, to wake up to check my blood sugar. Still? Still. Oh, just, man. There's always that constant fear that something's going to happen and you're not going to wake up. I'm going to be right. really honest. It's always in the back of your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. See, that's what I'm talking about. That's the difference. That's what people don't understand about uh, type 1 diabetes. Even when you sleep, you got to hope you wake up the next morning. Right. That means you. even when you sleep, you're still on guard. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, I mean, people need to take it seriously because, I, you know, God forbid anyone get diagnosed. But every time I hear about someone getting diagnosed, especially a child, I just I think about all of you all because I've been have the good fortune to be around uh, AM diabetes and just just being around it. It's, it's devastating. It really is. And for me to um, kind of like reiterate what Marin was saying about the sleep thing, for me, I don't set an alarm. I've, I've, it's almost as if, if my blood gets low during the middle of the night, I'll have like a dream and it almost like wake me up as soon really? as my blood gets low. And it, I mean, it is, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 I mean, I mean, it's, it's really weird. Like it's hard to, it, yeah, it, it's hard, <laughs> it's hard to describe, but it's, it's more of a, in my dream, I kind of just wake up. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. Like I can't, yeah, uh -huh. I can't, I, it's hard, but. Yeah. I wake up like a lot of bed. Like an internal clock. Yeah, I mean, I, I know what the feeling is. Well, so. make sure you keep batteries in that clock. That's oh, all I have to yeah. say. <laughs> well, going, it, it really rolling. feels totally different with a low blood sugar. So sometimes when you are sleeping, I know this morning I had a low blood sugar at 4 a.m. I was like 40 something, and I just kind of woke up and kind of felt it. And it's weird because okay, kind of felt it. Yeah. What does it feel like? Kind of felt it. It's really hard to describe. Okay. For me, it's like a heavy feeling like I can't I feel like I can't move I kind of almost feel paralyzed for a minute really yeah it's a little scary but once I can get myself up and going and get that snack it's like just just that waiting game of when is this going to affect my blood sugar bring it up quickly or is it going to take an hour most of the time it doesn't take too long but yeah so it's, a weird, it's a weird sluggish, feeling yeah like 
like you have no energy, you yeah. don't want to do anything. Yeah. Type situation. Like you're Is that that lethargic word? Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Lethargic. Yeah. I think when I, the first time I interviewed Ami, I think that was a word that he used to describe. I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs>